Good morning, Revolution Church. It's my favorite day of the week with my favorite people. It's so good to see you guys. Can we just give you guys one more hand? Just like, hey, let's wake everybody up. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord with God's people worshiping and studying God's word. Uh, it truly is life changing. Before I can jump into today's new message content, because we're in this series called I Want Faith Like That. And what we're doing is we're taking men and women of the Bible and we're analyzing their lives and seeing the circumstances and the battles that they were having to come up against and then going, man, how did they have that level of faith? If I could just have like half of the amount of faith that these guys had and these women had, man, my whole world would look different. But I just, I don't have faith like that. Pastor, what can I do? Help me out. We're gonna study God's word. We're gonna see some of the characteristics and really, I think today build a little outline that if we would just kind of outline our lives around this little outline, so much would be different. So much would be different. You got a relationship issue with your spouse, I promise you if you outline your life a certain way, things will be different. If your parenting's kind of messed up and your kids aren't listening well, if you outline your life a certain way, your life can be different. Your, your job and the way that everything operates day in and day out, I'm telling you, if you outline your life a specific way, life can be different. Jesus came to give us life and to give us life more abundantly, to be overflowing with the joy of the Lord. And, and, and so many times we see people come into church and on Sunday, uh, you know, they sing about there's joy in the house of the Lord. You know, we're doing all that thing. But then we go out into the world and we live like God doesn't exist and we go back to day-to-day -day grind of life and it's like, oh, here's the mundane. My favorite day of the week, pastor, is when we come in here with all the Christians and we get to celebrate and like sing, we're all on the same page. And yet God has said for us to go be a light in a dark place. That we're to bring that joy of the Lord out of the four walls or in our case, out of the octagon and take it into the world. There's a battle to be won. So much content I wanna to bring to you today and I uh, can't wait to get to it, but I, I wanted to this week definitely share with you an email that we received of just somebody saying thank you to the church. And so often we get these emails and we don't share it with you guys. And uh, I said, man, we need to share these with the, the, the congregation more. So I wanna just read this off to you and then we'll get into our message today. It says, hello, pastor. I just want to thank you and Rev Church family for blessing me with a financial need. I was having issues with my car and after getting my car out of the shop, I was feeling overwhelmed because I didn't have money in my bank account. Well, $40 to be exact. And I was thinking to myself, well, I have the car now, but now I need to pay for my insurance and gas. And I was just saying how overwhelmed I felt not having any money. And even though I was feeling like that, I am always praying to my God and thanking him for all I have and praying that I'm able to fix the car and do what I needed to do. And in that moment, when I was feeling overwhelmed, I received your call and you told me Rev Church was going to bless me with some financial help. I was shocked and without words, but very thankful. Our God listens to our prayers. Hello, somebody. Our God listens to our prayers and it's not in your time, but in his time that everything you ask for and believe for you will receive. Never give up on your prayers. Thank you so much, Pastor and Rev family for my blessing. Can we just celebrate what God is using us to do? So often the church meets needs for people and helps people in so many different ways. And, uh, and you guys just don't know about it. So I'm gonna do a better job of communicating how, how when you give of your tithes and your offerings, how it really does make a difference in people's lives. So I just wanted to give you that encouragement today. Let's jump into, I want a faith like that. And can everybody on the count of three say the word Noah? One, two, three, Noah. Noah, Noah is the character of the Bible I wanna talk about today. Um, I love the name Noah, just the name Noah itself. Uh, I've always liked that name, probably liked that name since I was a kid, because when I heard this story as a kid, I was like, man, I really, really like Noah as a Bible character. And I wanted to name one of my children Noah, but my last name is Moore, so it doesn't work, because Noah Moore, right? Like, you gonna have any more kids? No, my last one is Noah Moore, right? Like, just wouldn't have worked out, sounded a little funny. So I couldn't do it. So somebody out there, name your kid Noah. This is like an awesome Bible character, right? Let's talk about what is faith. The definition of faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. It's complete trust, not wavering trust, not trust sometimes whenever everything's working out, trust. 
It's really in the hardest times and seasons of life when things don't seem to be working out, complete trust, complete confidence in our God. I want a faith like these Bible story characters. If you have your Bible, Genesis chapter six, we're gonna read through verses nine through 22. Genesis six, nine through 22 says this. This is the account of Noah and his family. Now this verse right here, if you're looking for a verse to memorize, if you're looking for a verse to outline your life on, this is a really good one right here. Like super good one. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man. Everybody say righteous. Righteous. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. He was righteous and he was blameless. And he walked faithfully with God. This is an outline as to why I believe that when God looked down on the earth and said, hey, I'm going to basically start over with mankind. If you know the story, the rain's gonna come, the flood's gonna come, he's gonna build the boat. That whole story, we are talking about that Noah. If you were wondering, which Noah is he talking about? We're talking about that Noah. Why was he spared? I believe he was spared because he was a righteous man. He was blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. Walking faithfully with God isn't the way that we Americanize Christianity today. Walking faithfully with God isn't, I show up to church on a Sunday morning and I listen to the pastor teach me the Bible for 30, 35 minutes and I think that that's good enough. I'm a, listen, as your pastor, I'm a supplement to your spiritual growth. I'm not here to feed you for the whole week. And so many people, you go, well, I feel so filled up after I come to Revolution Church on Sunday and hear the word and it's what gets me through the week. And I go, that's because you're not reading your Bible daily. And you can actually eat of this food and this fruit and drink of this living water daily. It's not a once a week thing. You can have it every single day. It's available to all of us. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Faithfully means every single day of his life, he had relationship with God. God wasn't an afterthought. God wasn't a weekend experience. God walked with Noah and Noah walked with God. Can I get an amen, somebody? If you want to experience the type of miracles that we read about from these Bible characters, we have to outline our lives to look a little bit more like these Bible characters. Hello, somebody, y'all hearing this? Problem is we wanna experience the miracle, but we won't outline our lives around the truth of God's word. And you can't expect to have that result if we're not gonna follow the ingredients the way that, that we're told. So let's kind of keep digging. Verse 12 says this, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now we've got two staff members on our team right now. Uh, R2 and Tessa are about to have this baby. They've already got a name picked out, but I'm just saying some of these Bible names are options. I wanna at least throw them in the hat. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, maybe, all right? Consider them. Not all Bible names are good, right? But there's some Bible names for you. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, those are the three sons of Noah. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. Huh, where have I seen that before? Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. That sounds like our world today. Honestly, not a whole lot's changed from Noah's period of time till our period of time. The world is corrupt. People are doing whatever feels good instead of measuring their life according to God's truth. And this is so, so dangerous, church. It's dangerous for us to measure things like that. To say that anything and everything is acceptable and we're just gonna allow the world to teach us what's right and wrong is the farthest from what God wants us to do. And it's not popular nowadays to come back to God's word and say, God, what do you say? God, what do you desire? God, what do you want? And say, I'm gonna actually organize and rearrange my entire life to be whatever God's word tells me to do. That's not popular, but just because something isn't popular doesn't mean it's not right and doesn't mean it's not truth. Can I get an amen somebody? 
And if we want revival in our city, and if we want revival in our church, and if we want revival in our marriage, and in our land, and in our families, and in our futures, if we want revival, we have to come back to the truth of God's word. When God says it, it's true. All of it, not pieces of it, from cover to cover of the Bible, all of it is God's word. We're not gonna pick and choose. I'm comfortable with this part of the Bible, so I'll do it, I'm comfortable enough with that. No, 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 no. Here's what it means to follow Jesus. It means full submission over to your good God. Full trust and confidence that God knows what's best for the people that he created. Can you imagine that he created all of us? He spoke the world into existence with the sound of his voice. And if he can do that and he knows who you are and he created human beings, don't you think he understands the instruction manual of you? Don't you think he knows how you tick? And don't you think he understands how you think? And, and, and don't you think he knows what you need? And so often the created wants to look back at the creator and say, you don't know what's best for me. I have a bigger, better, better plan, a bigger, better deal for my life. And I'm gonna govern and tell you what I think should happen instead of the creator telling the created this is how you need to operate. And when we come into submission to a holy God and outline our lives this way, that's whenever instead of being an enemy of God, we become a partner with God. Because God invites us into this experience called life and he says, I wanna lead you and guide you and help you and walk with you. Noah walked faithfully with God and yet the world around him, listen, all the people around him, everybody that was at the school system, Everybody was, that was at that workplace, everywhere he looked, left, right, straight, forward, and back, they were corrupt in God's sight and they were full of violence. Translation, they said, we've got our own way of doing life. We know what's best and we're not gonna follow God's plan. Sounds very familiar to the world we live in today. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going, listen, hey, don't miss this. I am going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Time out, church. Let me just go ahead and bring some teaching into the church of God today. Because the reality is some of us grew up in Sunday school class. And if you grew up like I did in Sunday school class at the church, um, they brought the puppets out and they told you the kid version of Noah. And the puppets came out and they had two little bears that were dancing and two little zebras that were dancing. And it was like, hey, there's gonna be rain and we're gonna like, they're, they're gonna build the boat. And then Noah got on the, on the boat. And then at the end of all the rain, then the rainbow came out and we all had to, remember the coloring pages? Y'all got to pick a color and you got to do the whole rainbow and you colored in your rainbow. And it was like, oh, Noah, such a fun, happy story. Welcome to adult Sunday school today. I'm gonna put an end to all the people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely gonna destroy both them and the earth. Now, let me just tell you what people want versus what I'm giving them right now. People want me to tell them all about the love of, of God, the love of Jesus. Because in our minds, we've created this version of God that is this lovey-dovey, super kind, if I could use the word sweet version of Jesus, who's not, who, listen, we like the lamb of God and we don't want to talk about the lion of Judah. He's the lamb of God, but he's also the lion of Judah. The lamb of God is the loving part of God. But so many people, they just are comfortable with the version of God that says, hey, we just love all people and we love all things. And it's all about the love. And that sounds great, but I'm here to remind you today that there's another characteristic of God 
that is a God who has spoken truth. Now, I don't want a lying God. I want a truthful God. The God that I read about in the Bible has told us, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What's that mean? It means that we're sinners in need of God's saving grace. We needed what he did on that cross and his blood shed so that we could go to heaven. And without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. And so we need a savior. It's not just like, hey, do I need it? Maybe I'll take it, maybe I don't. Those are for the weak people. The weak people need the savior. No, 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 no. All mankind needs the saving power of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. We're okay with the love version of God, but I'm here to remind you and challenge you that there is a God who sits on the throne and he is number one above it all. He rules it all. No one is above him and no one compares to him. There's no contender that matches up in any way, shape or form to God. Well, what about the devil? The devil is nothing compared to God. Like, like, just be really clear. It's not this battle where they tug a war all the time. No, 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 no. He's like nothing. He's nothing. You've seen the UFC where they put the two fighters up against each other? Six foot three, six foot three. This much reach of wingspan. And, and this is how many fights they've won. And this is, they put all stats. God gets a title graphic for him that shows all his stats. And the devil doesn't even get a graphic made. No image. No image, right? No image to be found. Because he doesn't even compare to God. So let me explain. God one day is going to come back and the Bible says he's gone to prepare a place for us known as heaven, for those that are followers, those that believe. But everyone who doesn't believe is going to be cast away into a place called hell. Now, this is where all the people that have a version of God that say he's the loving God and he's kind and sweet and rainbows and unicorns and everything good and we're just smiling all the time and happy all the time. This is where they get really frustrated. Because when we start talking about the Lion of Judah, who's told us this is the way to get to heaven and there's no other way to get to heaven. There's only one way and it's by way of Jesus. And if you don't go by way of Jesus, you don't get to go. This is where these people get really irritated and frustrated. Because they go, well, I thought this was all about inclusivity. Because our world has taught us what to believe instead of going back to God's word on what to believe. The world will tell you, accept everything, receive everything, everything's welcome. And, and listen, there's nothing more inclusive than the Bible, the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's nothing more. What do you mean? Listen, he, he died for black people. He died for Mexican people. He died for white people. He died for Chinese people and Asian people. He died for all people. Guess what? He's so inclusive. He died for the rich person. He died for the middle class person and he died for the poor person. There's nothing in history that's more inclusive than Jesus Christ in the gospel message. Nothing. All throughout the scripture, race wasn't an issue. Money and wealth wasn't a thing. None of that divided anybody. By the way, he wasn't Republican and he wasn't Democrat. All the things that divide. See, see the world divides. The world divides and God unites. And God said, there's nothing more inclusive than the gospel. So I'm inviting everybody that hears the sound of my voice to come under relationship with Jesus and serve this holy God. Because listen, you might as well on this side of heaven, bow your knee and submit to almighty God and confess your need for him in your life. Because his Bible is true, he tells us that one day after he returns, every knee is gonna bow and every tongue is gonna confess that he's God. You say, well, I I don't believe in God. Great, your knee is still gonna hit the ground. Your tongue is still gonna say out loud that he's God because he is God. He owns it all, he rules it all, and he gives you opportunity to choose him today. Well, I don't don't like that he's making, that's because you have a God complex. Because you think you're God. And you think you got the best way of living life and you know the right way and you know truth and nobody's gonna tell you what to do. You got some pride that needs to be dealt with and you need to submit to a holy God. Let me be so clear. God's a God that everybody's gonna bow down to one day. And God also is that loving God that loves and pursues people. He's both. You're not one or the other. And so many people, you grow up, 
you grew up listening to, to the old school preachers and man, they'd beat that pulpit, wouldn't they? Man, I don't know how they did that. Their hands get all red, beat that pulpit and they'd like, like veins coming out of their head, like God, turn or burn, you know, like that whole thing. And you're like, oh, what is that? And what they were doing is they were teaching this version of God and they were neglecting this characteristic of God. But now what we've done is we've pendulum swung. We went from, from this characteristic of God all the way to this characteristic of God. And all we wanna do is talk about the love of God and we neglect to feel like uh, that we need to tell everybody the whole counsel of God's word. It's both, y'all. He loves us and he made a way for us and he's not condemning the world to judgment because he hates people. He gave of his life for those people. It's the most inclusive thing that you've ever seen that the world will ever see. And he said, if you'll follow the outline of my truth for your life, your whole world will be different because I wanna partner with you. I don't know if y'all are hearing this, but I'm gonna keep preaching, here we go. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. I want you to make a boat, make, 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 make an ark. You're gonna make a cruise ship, okay? Make, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. See, there was all this violence and destruction and evil in the world. And yet God said, I wanna make a way for, for Noah to escape all that. Because God wants you to escape the destruction of this earth too. And he's made a way, but you gotta come into submission with it. Let's watch what happens. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Now, if Noah would have lived in America 2022, Christian, Christianese way of doing life, here's what most Christians do nowadays. They go, did God really say I have to do 300 cubits long? I think God will be okay if I do 28 cubits long. And you know what? I don't know that we even have to have it that wide we could get away with like a narrower version and we'll just do longer because it'd be easier to do it that way. That's, that's how you and I in, in society, American Christian, we pick and choose the type of version of how much we're willing to obey and follow God. This is how much I'm comfortable following you, God. And yet God is super specific. Now he could have just said, build the boat. Have fun, man. Do whatever you think. I trust you. <laughs> right? Like You're smart, Noah. You do it whatever you want. He could have, but he didn't. Instead, he said 300 cubits long, 50 cubits, 30 cubits. Make a roof for it. Can you imagine Noah out there? He, he forgot to put the roof on. <laughs> that would have been a disaster, right? Like, and that's you and me so often when we're doing it our own way and we don't even have a guiding plan for our lives. We make poor choices and we find ourselves in the ditch and we go, God, dig us out of this hole. I didn't realize I needed a roof because rain's coming. Can you imagine you didn't build it with a roof? Boat sinks without the roof. Gotta have protective covering. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof and opening one cubit high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark. There's one door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. This is a nice cruise ship, all right? Three, three little layers there. I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. When we read it, we go, okay, water's coming. Noah had never seen rain before. We're in Genesis chapter six, y'all. It hasn't rained yet. So, so I want you to play it out here. Noah, he, he's trying to like obey God and follow God, but, but the faith that Noah had to have is that you're telling me that, that like water's gonna fall out of the sky? God, I don't even know what you're saying right now or why you're saying this to me, but he has to make a choice. Does he go and start building the boat having never seen water fall out of the sky before? Or does he choose to trust God? Let me tell you, being a Christian, God is gonna offer you many, many opportunities to trust him and to obey him and to follow him. And he, by the way, and he already has. He's gonna give you those opportunities and you're gonna have to make a decision and you're gonna have to make a choice of, do I fully trust God or do I part of the way trust God? And I'm just wondering how many of us are willing to submit to a holy God in our lives and say, God, everything that you say is truth is truth. And I submit my entire being over to you. 
The word Christian, the word Christian means Christ follower. And yet, so many people around this world today, we take that title of Christian, but we neglect to follow Jesus Christ. Hello. We're, it's fake. It's fraud. It's hypocritical. It's not right. This is why the world is repelled. They're repelled because they're, 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 they're getting the masked version of Christianity, and yet they can see clearly the truth. It's like, who are you, who are you, who are you kidding? And what we need is people, men and women of God, to obey God and go all in with him, fully trust him all the way. If he said it, it's good. From cover to cover of his Bible, I don't have to analyze, I don't have to guess, I don't have to figure out what your interpretation is and what my interpretation is, what do you think and what do I, none of that matters. What did God say and what are we supposed to be doing? This is what Noah was told, build it a certain way. But I will establish my covenant or my promise with you and, will in, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. We're gonna keep the animals alive. Two of every kind of bird, every kind of animal, every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come, check it out, will come to you to be kept alive. Now, I gotta normalize this for a second. Now, if it's me and I built this boat, which by the way, I didn't have my chainsaw <laughs> cutting the trees down. It took some faith to believe that I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna get this, this, all this wood off this tree without any power tools and I'm gonna build a three-story boat and you know, I'll bet there were people that were his friends and in relationship with him that he was close to, that probably started asking him questions like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, water's gonna start falling from the sky and destroy everything. Come help me build this boat. <laughs> like, dude, not only am I not gonna help you build the boat, but bro, we got a little PR issue here. We're gonna have to distance ourselves from Noah because he's lost his mind. We're, we're not, this guy's crazy insane right now. Noah's in faith, building a boat. He's in faith speaking to the people around him. This is what God said. He's gonna cast judgment upon the earth. He's probably telling him, this is what's coming. Y'all better be ready. Y'all better be prepared. You know what? People made fun of him. Look at Noah out there building this boat. He said it's gonna rain. You know, you had a heckling crowd. There was those, those haters in the crowd. Haters gonna hate, 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 man. And they, they, they were sitting there, Noah, what a fool. Can't believe he does this stuff follows God. He says he's following God in this way. This is insanity. You know what? I'll bet there's people in your life that don't understand why you go to church on a Sunday morning. And they go, why do you even go and waste your time at that place? <laughs> How foolish of you. What a waste. And better yet, oh, you give money to a church? Why in the world would you do that? Some of you, it's your spouse that says that to you. Why are we giving this to the church? We could use this. And yet you have this contention. And one of you saying, because we wanna follow God and the other one isn't there yet. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you'll submit to a holy God and trust his plan for your life. Because there are gonna be people in the world, there may be even people in your own household that think you're crazy for following God and dedicating your time and your energy and your resources and your treasure to the things of God, to build the kingdom of God. But I'm gonna tell you, Somebody's gonna look the fool at the end of the day and you don't want it to be you. Hello, somebody's gonna look the fool at the end of the day and you don't want it to be you. Noah looked like a fool right here in this moment. Temporary foolishness. But yet without Noah's obedience, we ain't even here right now, y'all. The whole world's gonna get wiped out. But I like this part. Two of every kind of bird, every kind of animal, and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you. If you normalize the story for a second, and you've just got done building this boat, and you've got one door to this boat, the Bible didn't say that he had to go crocodile hunting and go grab, you know, yeah, come here, and wrangle up the crocodile. He got two of them, right? And, okay, I gotta go grab some snakes. Can you imagine? How are you gonna get that scorpion? I don't know, but man, we gotta figure out how to, he didn't have to do all that, but it says, they will come to you. They will come to you. Even that is scary to me. Can you imagine all, think of all the animals in the world. These animals all start walking. He said, today's the day. Noah, today's the day, you're gonna get in the boat. All the animals are coming. And all of a sudden you hear like And you hear the rustling. 
can, can, you, can, you, can you get there with me? Like, and all of a sudden, from every angle and every animals are walking towards you. Dude, I'm like, dude, I'm like terrified out of my mind right now. I, possums are ugly. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Possums are gross and ugly. Sharp teeth, long tail, eyes that glow in the dark, fake and dying, but they're not really dead. Weird, demonic beings, okay? If I'm Noah and, and, and God's given me a command, you can put two of every animal. I've been a little tempted there to just go, you know, you can't go. You know, like, you're a possum, get off this thing. We don't need you here. I would have been tempted. But Noah, it says he obeyed God all the way. Check this out in verse 22. You are to take every kind of food that's to be eaten, stored away as food for them and for, and for them. And Noah did everything just as God commanded him. The difference between Noah and being able to receive the miracles and the provision and the miraculous work of God in his life and us is he did everything just as God commanded him. Monumental difference from the way that Christians in 2022 operate. We check our box. This is I showed up at church at some given point in time. By the way, did you know the average statistic of church attendance today is 1.2 times per month? Ouch. 1.2. Let, let me just kind of go through. Facts about Noah. Noah had never seen rain before. Noah was 600 years old when this story happened. Some of y'all, uh, pastor, I'd volunteer. I'm just, I'm just too old. No, -uh, Noah, 600 years old. As long as you got breath in your lung, you have a responsibility to be pointing people to Jesus, y'all. Took animals on the ark. Took a family of eight on the ark. The earth flooded for 150 days. Well, I thought it was 40 days and 40 nights. What did it rain? I don't know if that's biblically correct, pastor. Great, open up your Bible. I'm so glad I made you messed up in your thinking and you can't figure it out. Go to Genesis chapter six and read six, seven, and eight. And you tell me what it says. But I'm gonna tell you, for 150 days, the earth was flooded and everything died. How can we have a faith like Noah? Let's break it down. Well, by the way, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth. And that look, every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. That's why he destroyed it because the inclination of their hearts turned to evil all the time. You say, pastor, I, I, I don't think I have that problem. Like I, I, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to get my life in order. I, I, and, but yet I would argue you let a lot of garbage into your world that you don't need. And it actually hinders you from going forward for God instead of helping you. Uh, Pastor, I don't know if I have that problem. Well, then just let me look at your Netflix account and see what the continue watching looks like. And the, because you've watched this, let me just look at that. And I can pretty quickly know whether you're, uh, you're, you're good or not. How can I have a faith like Noah? We have to become righteous, y'all. That verse we read, very first verse I read says he was a righteous man. You're not gonna be righteous because you decided to wake up one day and okay, I'm righteous now. That's not, that's not how it works. If it was that, we just pray the prayer, God make me righteous today, I'm righteous, boom, done. You become righteous whenever you open up God's word and you let God's word speak to your heart. That's how you can become righteous. It's the guiding post, it's the barometer, if you will. It's the thing that tells us, this is what we're to do in our lives. Without God's word, when we throw the book out, then we get the world's way. How's that working out for us, church? It's no good. We have to become righteous. We do it by opening God's word. We do it through prayer. Prayer is me communicating to God. When I read his word, it's him communicating back to me. If you're not in relationship with God and you're not communicating, you will be struggling. So many people are. How, how, how can I have a faith like that? We have to be blameless. Blameless. What, what does it mean to be blameless? blameless. To be blameless means to, he did everything that God had commanded him to do. Make it this high, this long, this wide. This is the command. Now go do it. He was blameless. He did everything God asked him to do. He walked with God, not on Sunday morning for an hour, 365, 24 seven. He walked faithfully with God. And probably the, the last and most important was he obeyed God. Think of it this way. I can read the Bible, but not obey it. I can say prayer, I can say some words, but not mean it and really with my lifestyle show that I'm truly submitting. Imagine the relationship with me and my wife if I told my wife, 
the same two sentences every day. Only two sentences. I'm not gonna say anything else, I'm gonna say two sentences because truthfully, that's how the relationship with God looks like for so many people in this room. It's time to pray right before our meal and we say the same two sentences over and over and over again and think that God's happy. Imagine I say those same two sentences to my wife and I never say anything else. She's gonna say, what kind of relationship is this? I wanna talk with you. I wanna communicate with you. I wanna walk with you in your life. We have to obey God and do what he says. I I was thinking this week about this and I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, write some things on the screen. If we can get the cameras to zoom in here. I was just kind of thinking about Sunday services. And I was thinking, what are we asking people to, to do? We're asking them to come and, and sing songs of praise to God, to reverence him and respect his throne, his seat, that he's number one. And, and usually it's about an hour uh, and 15, unless Pastor Randy's preaching, then it's an hour and 30 minutes because sometimes he gets a little carried away, right? So, so there's me, about an hour and a half of your time, uh, Sunday services. Then I started thinking like, what else do we tell people to do? We say, you know, you probably need to get involved in a small group because you need Christian relationships. Because a lot of you, you come to church and it's almost predictable. I know where certain people sit. Like if I'm looking for somebody, I'm like, they always sit on the left side, second row, third row, or they're always in this area. Like Vincent's right there or the run right behind you. One more behind you, somebody was sitting there. And so you had to, so it's so predictable, right? But you need, you need your small group. Your small group is actually where you extend and build relationships. Because if there's a thousand people in the church and you come and sit in the same spot every week, and you don't say anything to anybody, and you come in a little late, and some of y'all leave a little early. How are you ever gonna build connection and relationship with anybody? And yet God says you need some Christian people in your life to strengthen you and to help you throughout your life. So we said, get in a small group. And you know what, let's just go ahead and call that an hour and a half, just because, about an hour, 30 minutes, okay? And then um, beyond Sunday services and small group, we say, you know what? You really need to serve, serve in your church. You need to be involved. You need to help other people meet, know, and follow Jesus. These are all things that God has commanded us to do. God said to worship him. God said to do life with other Christians and believers that the believers came together and they met and they studied God's word. I'm not asking you to do something God didn't say. I'm asking you to do what God did say. Noah was blameless in his generation. He did everything God asked him. So I started thinking about it. I said, what else do we ask people to do? We tell them, uh, serve one service. So we say, attend one, serve one. Well, that, that means you're gonna have to have another hour and a half. And then I started thinking about, hey, Misha, can you grab your phone? Get your phone real quick, get the calculator ready. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something here in a second. I'll, I'll tell you in just a second, okay? You're gonna serve a service, and you're gonna attend a service, you're gonna do a small group. Then we say, man, we need to pray. And we have this thing called Saturday prayer, and it's for one hour. And I've been saying this, and I'm telling everybody this, because I believe this all in my heart. As the prayer ministry grows, so will the church grow. And if the prayer ministry is stagnant, the church will be stagnant. And if the prayer ministry declines, the church will decline. If you wanna see revival in your city and you're tired of seeing the way our world is going, then it's time to be a light in a dark place. These are the things that have to happen. God told us to pray. He said, let me teach you how to pray. He showed it to him. But, but we meet every week for about an hour and we pray. And I wanna see that grow. And then I started thinking about, it, I'm like, hey, you know, serve day is once a month. And, and we've actually changed our strategy on this. We don't wanna neglect our prayer. So, so we're gonna pray from nine to 10 on Saturdays, but then once a month we do serve day and we're gonna start serve day right at 10. So those of us that wanna pray for an hour are gonna pray, but then we'll have a two hour serve day. So it's gonna be two hours. This is only once a month though. That's once a month. What else is there? Hmm. Sunday service, serve in a service, going to small group, Saturday prayer, serve day. These are kind of the things, right? These are like the things that God said, make sure you go into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, you're not gonna be able to preach anything if you don't know the scriptures. That's why you gotta get in a small group and learn. So I gotta be at church and grow. Start going through it all. I started thinking, how much time am I asking for people to even come and do anything? So let's, let's get the calculator ready. Okay, so I got an hour and a half and an hour and a half. That's, that's what, that's three and then a, a four, five, five and a half, seven and a half. 
Are we seven and a half, Misha? Are you, are you keeping me accountable? Okay, so I got, I got seven and a half hours a week that I'm asking people to participate in God, to serve him, to do what he's asked us to do, to obey the Bible. Do me a favor, type in 24 hours times seven. 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. Thank you, Misha. <laughs> 168, his voice changed. I understood though, it's good. 168 hours, take 168 hours and take that times four. 672, 672 hours in a month. I want you to take seven and a half that we need and take that times four. 7.5 times four, what is it? 30? Misha's holding me accountable. We have 672 hours a month and I'm, I'm just begging the church to follow God for 30 hours of all that. I'm just wondering, is that too much to ask for the guy that gave his life for you? For the guy that promised you all of eternity, heaven, relationship with him. And for some people, I'm just blowing your mind. You're going, that's way too much. I know where you're at. But for others of us, we need to be challenged we need to be challenged in our relationship with God to walk blameless before him. These are all things God's asked us to do. You know, I started thinking about it. I go, you know what? I'm not asking too much at all. And in fact, I started thinking about other religions. I started thinking about the Catholics. Catholics are open every single day. You know what? Some of these people get up right at the earliest part of the morning when the sunrise is coming up and they pray every single morning. They go to the place. They don't pray wherever they are. They go to the place and they pray for like an hour. You know, I was talking to this, uh, a lady that, that believes in Buddha and she was saying two and a half hours a day, they spend time uh, worshiping and praying and like wrapping their whole lives around Buddha. Then I started thinking about those guys on the bicycle outside with the white shirts on and the black ties. Like those guys are dedicated and they're committed to what they believe. Then I started really going crazy. I started thinking about, you know, there's some people for their religion and for their God, they got in a plane and they wrecked it into two buildings because they said, I'm gonna go follow my God. And my God wants me to destroy people. God wants my life. Our God, Christianity, Romans chapter 12 says that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing, and acceptable to God. It's our reasonable service. It's reasonable for me as your pastor to say, dude, seven and a half hours a week is nothing, y'all. It's reasonable. God didn't ask you to die for him. He asked you to live for him. And I'm just wondering when Christianity is going to become what it's supposed to be. Because we just tap that word revival around a lot. And we say we want it, but we're not willing to obey God to have it. And I don't know about you, but this guy right here, this guy believes in a real place called heaven. And I believe in a real place called hell and real people that you go to school with and real people that are in your family, real people that you work with, your parents, real people are gonna die one day and they're either gonna go to heaven or they're gonna go to hell. And if we love people like we say we love people, then we better get busy inviting our friends and family and coworkers and neighbors and friends and school. We better invite all these people to hear the message of the good news of Jesus Christ because we wanna see them in heaven. And we're not gonna let anything stand in the way of their relationship with God. I'm just convinced that if we believed that God wanted to do miracles, we would outline it. Well, listen, we would rearrange our whole lives to follow Jesus if we believed that rain was coming. You know, the Bible at the end of that story, they put that rainbow up and he says, I'm never going to destroy the world like this again. You know, that, that way was with water. The next way is gonna be with fire. Uh-oh, he's talking about the God, God side of, yep, I am. And I'm also gonna tell you about this side of God that loves you that says you don't have to go through the fire. You don't have to go through the fire if you choose to have a relationship with me, which brings me to this right here. This is a prayer that I encourage people to pray, to ask Jesus to be part of their life. And today you're not here by accident. Listen to me, there's not a person in this room right now that's here by accident. 
you're here on purpose to hear this exact message on purpose because God is sovereign and he knew that you would need to hear this, this message. He's trying to say something through me to speak to you. And what I hope you hear is that God loves you, that God made a way of escape. And if you'll rearrange your life to follow him, there's some miracle, miraculous provision that he provides. It's the blessed life. And I want it for all of you, for all of you. And if you want it, here's how you get it. You just pray and repeat this prayer. Say, God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus for me. Be my Lord, be my savior. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me for doing life my way. Show me your way. Fill me with your spirit. Guide me by your word. Make me who you created me to be. Amen. Let's welcome people into the family of God, church. Come on. Amen. If you just made a decision, I want you to text the word new me with no spaces. Pull out your phone, text the word new me with no spaces to the number on the screen. And I'm gonna send you a response back more about that prayer that you just prayed and then give you some next steps to follow Jesus with your life. Before we dismiss out of here, I wanna say one thing. Uh, some people on here, whenever they see a, a, a thing like this, I always laugh whenever I think about how we're called to like follow God. I always think about the tithe. You know, the tithe is something that for people, they go, oh, don't even start talking about money, pastor. Well, well, I always laugh because people go, I'm not gonna tithe of my money, I'm gonna tithe of my time. And then I go, oh, you are? Well, man, there's 672 hours. So that means I get you for 67 hours throughout the week. I'll see you tomorrow, right? And it's like, there's a lot of work to do around here. So, so just, just a funny thing. I'm encouraged by what I see God doing in this church and what I see him doing in the lives of families. So many people's lives are transforming right now. And I'm hearing success story after success story of just what God is removing out of people's lives and how, how happy people truly are. And if that's not your story, I want you to continue to come and I want you to continue to submit to the voice of God in your life. And I want you to watch the transformation take place. And I promise you that God is too big of a God to enter into your life and you stay the same. You will change and it will be awesome. With all that being said, we're gonna say goodbye to our online campus on the count of three. Help me out. One, two, three. Goodbye. We say goodbye.